You've heard of the Chevy Bolt and the Nissan Leaf and of course the Tesla Model 3. But here's an electric car you may not have seen before, the Renault Zoe. This car is not sold in the United States, it's only available in Europe. But with a 300 km range, it's still a really interesting electric car. And driving it around France will give us a chance to get a look at not only the vehicle itself, but also the charging infrastructure in and around France. The Zoe probably best compares to the Nissan Leaf, as they both cost around the same and both have 40 kWh batteries. The Zoe has a bit more range, around 180 miles compared to 150 or so for the Leaf. The edition one I'm driving starts at 28,000 euros, but you can take off 6,000 euros for the French tax credit. Unlike with other EVs, you have to lease the battery from Renault for between 70 and 120 euros a month, depending on usage. While not exactly a luxury EV like a Tesla, the edition one model I'm driving does have leather seats and other perks. There are two screens for the dash and entertainment system. The latter is a touch system that uses Renault's R-Link to give you entertainment and navigation options. At any point, you can use it to find the nearest charging station. So how do you charge this EV? It comes with an adapter so you can plug it straight into the wall, or you can install Renault's wall box, similar to Tesla's wall connector, for about a thousand euros. A regular 2.3 kilowatt 10 amp household circuit will get you charged in about 20 hours, while a beefier 3.2 kilowatt wall box option will reduce that to as little as 5 hours. A level 3 public charger can juice you in just over 3 hours, and a level 4 model in an hour and 40. There are a lot of chargers around France, especially in Paris, both paid and free for Renault owners. That's great, but owners have to carry a lot of subscription cards and install a lot of apps to get around smoothly. One way to avoid that is via ChargeMap, a site that gives you access to a lot of chargers with a single pass. Because of that, route planning is a must. I have this car for five days and I've set out a fairly ambitious agenda. One, two, three, four. So we're on our way to Sancerre, which is a well-known region uh, in France for wine. And uh, when we started the trip, we had uh, 210 uh, kilometers to go. Um, normally the range on this car can be up to 300 kilometers. But as it's a bit cold, uh, the range is going to be a bit reduced. So we've arrived in Sancerre. When we left, like I said, there was about 210 kilometers on the ticker as far as battery power. And Sancerre is about 35 kilometers away. And now we have 175 kilometers left. So that's exactly, we got exactly the mileage that it said we would. And uh, we've got plenty for the rest of the day for the trips that we have planned. The Zoe proved itself very worthy for short trips under 120 kilometers, which are very typical for French people in the countryside. Now comes a bigger test, which is going 150 kilometers to Paris. Traveling on the freeway, where EV mileage is the worst, means I'll probably have to recharge. All right, so I'm on my way back to Paris. It's about a 150 kilometer trip, so I should easily be able to make it with an electric car that has a range of 300 kilometers. However, running on the freeway, you use a lot more electricity, so it's really quite cutting it quite close to be able to go 150 kilometers. So to avoid any problems, I've stopped along the way at a uh, charging station that's run by the French electrical company uh, EDF. And it's one of the faster chargers out there, so I should be able to uh, get uh, about 20 or 30% more power in about 30 minutes. Back in Paris is where the Zoe really shines. There are numerous spots you can recharge and with a 200 mile plus city range, you probably wouldn't need to do so for up to a week. On top of that, it's, uh, it's just a fun car to drive in the city. It's, uh, it's, it's quite small, so it's really zippy. It has great acceleration uh, and it's really an ideal car for me to drive in the city. The Zoe isn't perfect, of course. I think the range is exaggerated, so you can take that 180 mile estimate with a grain of salt. Renault has a bad reputation for quality control, so the fit and finish feels a bit cheap, and some Zoe owners are not happy about how Renault has handled warranty problems. Finally, the R-Link system is not very responsive and has a poorly designed user interface. Overall, however, the Zoe can serve about 90% of my private transportation needs in a small country like France, easily getting me back and forth between the city and countryside. In either case, I could do chores or short trips, and charge up at home each night. Electricity in France mostly comes from nuclear, hydro, and other non-carbon sources, and prices are about 20% cheaper than the EU average. At the moment, including subsidies, Renault claims that the cost of ownership for a Zoe is on par with gas or diesel cars. Given all that, if I was in the market, I would strongly consider buying one. <laughs>